This time we're going to talk about the nucleus. So first of all, what is the nucleus? The nucleus is the most important organ of the cell because it's responsible for the organization of the functions of the cell itself. So if we want to give a definition for the nucleus, we'll say that the nucleus is a membrane-bound organelle because there is a membrane that coats the nucleus. So it's embedded inside a membrane. So we can say that it's a membrane-bound organelle which is responsible for the organization of the cell functions and DNA replication, transcription, and so on. So this is the definition. Now, what does the nucleus look like? Here we can talk about two main uh, aspects because we use two kinds of microscopes uh, in order to examine how does the nucleus look like. We have the light microscope and we have the electron microscope. For the light microscope in order to see how does the nucleus look like, we have to use a dye or a stain. And one of the most commonly used dyes or stains is the hematoxylene AUCE mixture. So these are two dyes which are used together and Hematoxylene is basic, while eosine is acidic. So there are organelles inside the cell which are eosinophilic. This means that they are basic organelles, so they will be affected by the acidic eosine. On the other hand, there are other organelles which are acidic, and they will be affected by the basic hematoxylene. And these organelles are called basophilic because they love bases. They are affected by the basic hematoxylene. So one of these organelles is the nucleus. So the nucleus is basophilic and it's affected by hematoxylene. And this effect is that hematoxylene stains the nuclei by a dark violet color. So if we look into the slide through the microscope and we see the cells like that, for example, we'll see these dark spots inside the cells and these will be the nuclei. And of course this will be in a dark violet color. So this is how the nuclei look like in the light microscope. In the electron microscope, on the other hand, it has a, a far higher magnification power, so we will see much more details of the nucleus itself. So we will see the components of the nucleus. So the first thing that we will see, we will see the outer membrane that we talked about. We said that the nucleus is a membrane-bound organ. So we will see something that looks like this. This first component is an envelope. So it's called the nuclear envelope. Nuclear envelope. And this envelope itself can be considered as an organelle because it has an outer membrane, an inner membrane, a lamina, and it contains pores. These pores are called nuclear pores. So this will be a nuclear pore. And through these pores, the uh, substances are exchanged inside and outside the nucleus. So this is the first part. Also, the diameter of this nuclear envelope 
is about 90 nanometers. So this is the diameter. Is about 90 nanometers. So this is the first component. The second component is the fluid inside the nucleus, which is called the nuclear lamina. And this nuclear lamina is a lattice-like protein network containing proteins, mainly one of them, which is called lamins. This is the most common kind of protein in such lamina, and then in this lamina. And the function of these lamins is as follows. During the prophase of mitosis, there is an enzyme called lamin kinase. And this lamin kinase breaks down these lamins. And this action initiates the assembly of the whole nucleus into small vesicles throughout the process of the cell division. Also integrated inside the lamina, we have the chromatin. And the chromatin is the condensed form of the DNA. We know that the DNA is a double helix like that that looks something like this. And this double-stranded DNA loops and becomes more condensed and more condensed. It loops around proteins called histones and so on to form more condensed structures till it forms the chromatin. And the more condensed the DNA becomes, the harder it can be used in the transcription. So if the DNA is just like that, it can be unwinded and used in transcription easily, but if it's uh, very condensed, the action will be much harder. So inside the nucleus, there are two types of chromatin. We have one kind of chromatin that looks very electron dense. It means that it looks darker, so grayish to black color. So it looks something like that. Inside the nucleus. Dark electron-dense regions. This is the heterochromatine. The heterochromatine. So this is very condensed chromatine. It represents about 10% of the total chromatine inside the nucleus and it's inactive for transcription. On the other hand, we have light portions here of the chromatin, and these are the euchromatine regions. So, euchromatin. And of course, this represents euchromatin. This represents the other 90% of the chromatin in the nucleus and this is electron light it's less condensed and so it's active for transcription the final component of the nucleus that we're going to talk about is the nucleolus nucleolus and this part is responsible for the synthesis of the ribosomes. So accordingly we have three regions of the nucleolus. We have the center, it's very dense, and it's called the fibrillar center, fibrillar center, and it's dense because it contains the DNA which is not used for transcription. The fibrillar center if we go a little bit farther we will have a less dense part which is called the fibrillar zone 
and this contains the uh, ribosomal fibers that are used for transcription. The ribosomal fibers that are used for transcription of ribosomes. And the farthest region here is the less dense and it's called the granular zone. It's called the granular zone. And it's called the granular zone because it contains granules. Granular zone. So it contains granules, and these granules would be represented by the uh, different uh, phases of ribosomes until they reach the mature phase and they get outside of the nucleus throughout the nuclear cores. So basically, this is it for the nucleus, and in the next time, we're going to begin to talk about the other elements inside the cytoplasm of the cell. So until then, I thank you for watching and see you.